Good evening and welcome to this PBS NewsHour special report. I'm Judy Woodruff. We are moments away from President Trump's announcement of his nominee to the United States Supreme Court. It is Mr. Trump's second opportunity to leave his mark on American law, perhaps for decades to come. Tonight, the stakes are even higher than before. Whoever is chosen will fill the vacancy of retiring Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy, who has often been the determining vote on landmark decisions. It has been widely reported Mr. Trump narrowed his selection down to four candidates and that he made his final decision earlier today. We are going to be looking uh, in a moment at a picture of the East Room of the White House where the president will bring the person he's chosen. Uh, and we can say our own reporters have spotted the family of Judge Brett Kavanaugh in the room, which uh, does sound as if it's going to be Judge Kavanaugh, but we will wait and see. He is on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit. He formerly worked in the White House uh, of President George W. Bush, and he formerly clerked for Justice Anthony Kennedy, whose seat he would be taking. All right, we are training our camera on the hallway, coming from the center of the main part of the White House, leading into the East Wing, looking for the president to be joined by the person he is selected. And right now, we see President Trump walking alone. We'll find out in a moment who he has named. President Trump. My fellow Americans, tonight I speak to you from the East Room of the White House regarding one of the most profound responsibility of the President of the United States, and that is the selection of a Supreme Court Justice. I've often heard that other than matters of war and peace, this is the most important decision a President will make. The Supreme Court is entrusted with the safeguarding of the crown jewel of our Republic, the Constitution of the United States. Twelve days ago, Justice Anthony Kennedy informed me of his decision to take senior status on the Supreme Court, opening a new vacancy. For more than four decades, Justice Kennedy served our nation with incredible passion and devotion. I'd like to thank Justice Kennedy for a lifetime of distinguished service. In a few moments, I will announce my selection for Justice Kennedy's replacement. This is the second time I have been faced with this task. Last year, I nominated Judge Neil Gorsuch to replace the late, great Justice Antonin Scalia. I chose Justice Gorsuch because I knew that he, just like Justice Scalia, would be a faithful servant of our Constitution. We are honored to be joined tonight by Justice Scalia's beloved wife, Maureen. Maureen. Thank you, Maureen. Both Justice Kennedy and Justice Scalia were appointed by a president who understood that the best defense of our liberty and a judicial branch, immune from political prejudice, were judges that apply the Constitution as written. That president happened to be Ronald Reagan. For this evening's announcement, we are joined by Ronald Reagan's Attorney General, Edwin Meese. Ed. <laughs> In
And Ed, I speak for everyone. Thank you for everything you've done to protect our nation's great legal heritage. In keeping with President Reagan's legacy, I do not ask about a nominee's personal opinions. What matters is not a judge's political views, but whether they can set aside those views to do what the law and the Constitution require. I am pleased to say that I have found, without doubt, such a person. Tonight, it is my honor and privilege to announce that I will nominate Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. I know the people in this room very well. They do not stand and give applause like that very often. So they have some respect. And Brett's wife, Ashley, and their two daughters, Margaret and Eliza, have joined us on the podium. And thank you, and congratulations to you as a family. Thank you. Judge Kavanaugh has impeccable credentials, unsurpassed qualifications, and a proven commitment to equal justice under the law. A graduate of Yale College and Yale Law School, Judge Kavanaugh currently teaches at Harvard, Yale, and Georgetown. Throughout legal circles, he is considered a judge's judge, a true thought leader among his peers. He is a brilliant jurist, with a clear and effective writing style, universally regarded as one of the finest and sharpest legal minds of our time. And just like Justice Gorsuch, he excelled as a clerk for Justice Kennedy. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Judge Kavanaugh has devoted his life to public service. For the last 12 years, he has served as a judge on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals with great distinction, authoring over 300 opinions which have been widely admired for their skill, insight, and rigorous adherence to the law. Among those opinions are more than a dozen that the Supreme Court has adopted as the law of the land. Beyond his great renown as a judge, he is active in his community. He coaches CYO basketball, serves meals to needy families, and, having learned from his mom, who was a school teacher in D.C., tutors children at local elementary schools. There is no one in America more qualified for this position and no one more deserving. I want to thank the senators on both sides of the aisle, Republican and Democrat, for their consultation and advice during the selection process. This incredibly qualified nominee deserves a swift confirmation and robust bipartisan support. The rule of law is our nation's proud heritage. It is the cornerstone of our freedom. It is what guarantees equal justice. And the Senate now has the chance to protect this glorious heritage by sending Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. And now, Judge, the podium is yours.
Mr. President, thank you. Throughout this process, I have witnessed firsthand your appreciation for the vital role of the American judiciary. No president has ever consulted more widely or talked with more people from more backgrounds to seek input about a Supreme Court nomination. Mr. President, I am grateful to you, and I'm humbled by your confidence in me. Thank you. 30 years ago, President Reagan nominated Anthony Kennedy to the Supreme Court. The framers established that the Constitution is designed to secure the blessings of liberty. Justice Kennedy devoted his career to securing liberty. I am deeply honored to be nominated to fill his seat on the Supreme Court. My mom and dad are here. I am their only child. When people ask what it's like to be an only child, I say, it depends on who your parents are. <laughs> I was lucky. My mom was a teacher. In the 1960s and 70s, she taught history at two largely African-American public high schools in Washington, D.C., McKinley Tech, and H.D. Woodson. Her example taught me the importance of equality for all Americans. My mom was a trailblazer. When I was 10, she went to law school and became a prosecutor. My introduction to law came at our dinner table when she practiced her closing arguments. Her trademark line was, use your common sense. What rings true, what rings false. That's good advice for a juror and for a son. One of the few women prosecutors at that time, she overcame barriers and became a trial judge. The president introduced me tonight as Judge Kavanaugh, but to me, that title will always belong to my mom. My dad went to law school at night while working full time. He has an unparalleled work ethic, and has passed down to me his passion for playing and watching sports. I love him dearly. The motto of my Jesuit high school was men for others. I've tried to live that creed. I've spent my career in public service from the executive branch and the White House to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit. I've served with 17 other judges, each of them a colleague and a friend. My judicial philosophy is straightforward. A judge must be independent and must interpret the law, not make the law. A judge must interpret statutes as written, and a judge must interpret the Constitution as written, informed by history and tradition and precedent. For the past 11 years, I've taught hundreds of students primarily at Harvard Law School. I teach that the Constitution's separation of powers protects individual liberty. And I remain grateful to the dean who hired me, Justice Elena Kagan. As a judge, I hire four law clerks each year. I look for the best. My law clerks come from diverse backgrounds and points of view. I am proud that a majority of my law clerks have been women. I am part of the vibrant Catholic community in the D.C. area. The members of that community disagree about many things, but we are united by a commitment to serve. Father John Ensler is here. Forty years ago, I was an altar boy for Father John. These days, I help him serve meals to the homeless at Catholic Charities. I have two spirited daughters, Margaret and Liza. Margaret loves sports, and she loves to read. Liza loves sports, 
and she loves to talk. <laughs> I have tried to create bonds with my daughters like my dad created with me. For the past seven years, I have coached my daughter's basketball teams. The girls on the team call me Coach K. I am proud of our Blessed Sacrament team that just won the city championship. My daughters and I also go to lots of games. Our favorite memory was going to the historic Notre Dame UConn women's basketball game at this year's Final Four. Unforgettable. My wife Ashley is a West Texan a graduate of Abilene Cooper Public High School and the University of Texas. She is now the town manager of our community. We met in 2001 when we both worked in the White House. Our first date was on September 10th, 2001. The next morning, I was a few steps behind her as the Secret Service shouted at all of us to sprint out the front gates of the White House because there was an inbound plane. In the difficult weeks that followed, Ashley was a source of strength for President Bush and for everyone in this building. Through bad days and so many better days since then, she has been a great wife and an inspiring mom. I thank God every day for my family. Tomorrow, I begin meeting with members of the Senate, which plays an essential role in this process. I will tell each senator that I revere the Constitution. I believe that an independent judiciary is the crown jewel of our constitutional republic. If confirmed by the Senate, I will keep an open mind in every case, and I will always strive to preserve the Constitution of the United States and the American rule of law. Thank you, Mr. President. And there you have President Trump's second pick for the United States Supreme Court, Judge Brett Kavanaugh of the D.C. Appellate Circuit Court uh, with his wife, Ashley, and two daughters. Uh, we just heard a little personal story about them. But before that, we heard President Trump say that uh, Judge Kavanaugh has impeccable credentials. He said he is a judge's judge, and he said he's a thought leader. He went on to say uh, he's written over 300 opinions on the circuit uh, and uh, had, had a great deal of praise for the record of this judge. Let's uh, turn right now to our John Yang, who's uh, there at the White House on the North Lawn. John, they tried to keep this secret, but uh, I guess in the last few hours, the word started to leak out. Uh, that's right, Judy. And actually, White House officials are now saying that the president made his decision last night uh, and called Kavanaugh to tell him of his decision. Uh, he also called Don McGahn, his White House counsel, who has been championing uh, Kavanaugh as a uh, candidate for the Supreme Court. Uh, it's been widely reported that the president also had to overcome some reservations about Kavanaugh, uh, particularly his ties, his close ties, uh, to the Bush family. He served as staff secretary uh, to President George W. Bush. That, meant, uh, that means he managed the paper flow uh, across his desk, across the president's desk in the Oval Office. Uh, and some social conservatives have also been a bit cool on Kavanaugh because of uh, two opinions 
Uh, he wrote uh, recently one on the Affordable Care Act and one on immigration and, uh, and abortion uh, that they felt lacked the sort of ideal, uh, ideological zeal. Uh, and a matter of fact, one of the groups campaigning uh, primarily for Amy Coney, Coney Barrett and uh, uh, released a picture or distributed a picture of, uh, of uh, a Kavanaugh uh, with uh, the arms of uh, uh, the arm of uh, Karl Rove around his shoulders, Karl Rove, President George W. Bush's political advisor, who has been keenly, sharply critical of uh, President Trump uh, during the campaign and during his pre presidency, and whom President Trump has said not to like very much. Uh, but clearly, he overcame those objections uh, and uh, and now has nominated uh, Brett Kavanaugh uh, to be on the Supreme Court. And, John, we see a very uh, glowing uh, statement uh, from former President George W. Bush, who's been relatively quiet about this president. But tonight, he makes it very clear that he thinks the choice of Judge Kavanaugh is a good one. We should point out, on a more, I guess on a more personal note, we've just learned that Judge, uh, or we know that Judge Kavanaugh's wife, uh, who he introduced, Ashley, was a secretary, personal secretary, to President George W. Bush. Let's learn a little bit more about the pick and uh, the fight to come, if you will, in the Congress. And for that, let's turn to David Rivkin. He's an attorney here in Washington who served as associate White House counsel for President George H.W. Bush. He's also argued before Judge Kavanaugh on the Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit. And Elizabeth Widra, she's the president of the Constitutional Accountability Center. It's a progressive law firm and think tank here in Washington. Thank you to both of you. Uh, Elizabeth Widra, to you first. We knew, I guess, in the hour or so leading up to this that it was probably going to be mm -hmm. Judge Kavanaugh, the president, glowing in his description of him. You heard what Judge Kavanaugh had to say. What's your take? Well, certainly the stakes could not be higher in this fight. Justice Kennedy was the decisive vote on crucial issues such as abortion access, LGBTQ equality, racial justice, environmental protection. And so all eyes are going to be on Judge Kavanaugh's record. He has a substantial one. And trying to make sure that he will follow the law and the Constitution, including the 14th Amendment, which today celebrates its 150th anniversary, and its guarantees of equality, personal dignity, and liberty for all. So, you know, we're going in with these high stakes that makes the battle particularly pitched. Uh, Judge Kavanaugh, as you saw, is a very affable and genial man. And as a fellow Yale law grad, his credentials are impeccable um, in that respect. But, you know, he really has a high burden because of President Trump's stated litmus test going into, uh, going through his campaign, that he would put someone on the bench who would automatically vote to overrule Roe versus Wade and, and expand gun rights in particular. David Rivkin, what do we know about him? Because as we just heard, we just heard personal comments. He introduced his family. The, the, the comments from the president were quite general. What do we know about Brett Kavanaugh? We know Andrew? that in addition to an excellent background, he is a judge's judge. Uh, he is somebody who calls the cases based upon the law and the Constitution. We look at his opinions. There's absolutely no basis to conclude he is going to overturn Roe, which is well entrenched. It's not just Roe, but cases like Casey uh, that... These are, these are uh, ab cases that have to do with legaliz legalizing legalization abortion. Legalization of abortion. Oberfeld, frankly, this is not the issue. The impressive thing about Judge Kavanaugh is this committed in the same way as Justice Kennedy, because <laughs> the critics have talked about changing the balance of a court. I don't necessarily agree with this an issue, but Kennedy was the greatest justice in place who cares about structural separation of powers provisions, which is the best way to protect individual liberty. Justice Kavanaugh is exactly in the same place. And what's interesting about it is he calls the shots in this area, irrespective of the policy outcomes. For example, he, in a in, in 2008 case where he dissented and the Supreme Court eventually upheld it in the public uh, company accounting oversight board, he held that the way the statute was written violated the Constitution because it was too, the, the statutory language was unduly diminishing of a presidential accountability. So he, hit Article I, Congress, for putting something out that was not constitutional. In 2013, well, me, he yeah, but held well, I, the other way 
I just I, I mean, we can get to some of those some of those opinions in a minute, but I want to get to the the larger point that we've been hearing in the last days since this all came about that Justice Kennedy announced uh, that he was stepping down. Elizabeth Wydra, people are virtually everyone is saying this is someone who will be more conservative in the way he hands down and writes decisions than has been Justice Kennedy. How do you see that? I think that's right. And, you know, President Trump said that clearly. He didn't want someone who was going to be like Justice Kennedy or Chief Justice Roberts. He wanted someone who was more like Justice Scalia. That was his mold. Um, you know, I, I think that David's description is nice of the justice that he would see, but that's not how Trump described the justice that he was going to nominate to the Supreme Court. He was very clear about issues like overturning the right to abortion and expanding gun rights and uh, being willing to strike down uh, the Affordable Care Act and protections for pre-existing conditions. And in that sense, uh, he would have something in common with Justice Kennedy. But it does change yeah. the, uh, the center of the court. Now the center is probably Chief Justice Roberts, which is very far to the right. And that assumes he gets confirmed. I want to quickly go to our Capitol Hill correspondent, Lisa Desjardins, uh, just for a sense, just very quickly, Lisa, of what the reaction will be among Republicans and Democrats to Judge Kavanaugh. Yeah, no surprise. Republicans, by and large, are ecstatic. There are some who say they're looking forward to the process, but they're warm still to the judge. Uh, in particular, of course, Senator McConnell and House Speaker Paul Ryan have been extolling this candidate. Uh, but from the Democrats, also no surprise, Judy, we see the opposite. Uh, Chuck Schumer, the Democratic leader in the Senate, writing that he thinks this nomination puts pr reproductive rights and freedoms and health for millions of Americans on the judicial chopping block. So that's, I think, what you're going to see the debate over these core issues happening right now. No coincidences are also issues that Democrats will probably raise for the midterm elections. One other note, Judy, talking to staffers ahead of tonight's announcement, Democrats thought that this was uh, the candidate that they had the most shot at raising questions about because of his lengthy paper trail, as John Yang has spoken about. Uh, but it's not clear what exactly that means. They just think that in all of those uh, those records and all of those orders and rulings that they'll find something uh, that will raise doubt about this candidate. They haven't said what it is, but that's their one hope. Yeah, it's interesting uh, that that uh, we it's been reported in the last few days that the majority leader, Mitch McConnell, uh, was reported to have told the president he would be better off not appointing uh, Judge Kavanaugh for that very reason, arguing that he did have such a long paper trail. There'd be a lot of material to dig through, a lot of opinions and speeches and so forth. All right, Lisa Desjardins at the Capitol, thank you very much. Actually, Lisa, I'm going to stay with you just a minute um, because it, it's, you know, we heard, we heard Judge Kavanaugh say there, I revere the Constitution. I believe in an independent judiciary. I'm going to call, you know, make decisions one by one. We also know that President Trump said during the campaign that he planned to appoint justices to the Supreme Court who would overturn Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. So how are Republicans, how are Democrats at the Capitol looking at that? right now. I think your panel will probably speak to this more, but I think the Judge Kavanaugh's relatively recent decision in the Garza case, which dealt with uh, an unaccompanied minor who was seeking an abortion. We covered that story here on the News Hour, and he was a key judge, and there are audio recordings of his questions and his approach to that case. Some on the right feel that he allowed too much leeway for abortion to exist as a, a legal option in this country, but those on the left felt that he was not giving that minor child um, what they felt was her right to a quicker option for abortion. So both sides have questions about that case. There is a middle, I think, on the right that says he was upholding precedent as a appeals court judge, and it, that may not reflect on what he would do on the Supreme Court. All right, Lisa Desjardins, we're going to have days and even weeks to, to look at this, but we know that the Senate is... Uh, it starts the, tomorrow. That's right. They've He'll said that we're going to start working on this right away. Lisa Desjardins, thank you. Sorry. And I need to say uh, that we are going to pause right here. PBS NewsHour will continue in a moment in the western U.S. Many of our PBS stations in the east are going to be now returning to their regularly scheduled programming. Thank you.